Do you need max forgiveness in your irons? If so, this comparison will help you choose the right irons for your game. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm joined by Skylar Kistler, and Skylar's going to be doing some equipment testing for us today. Skylar is a sales associate at Second Swing Minnetonka store. Skylar, thanks so much for joining. Of course. So today we're going to be discussing kind of max forgiving game, and, game improvement irons. So we have a comparison comparing like three like hybrid options versus three of the really high high MOI, very forgiving game improvement irons out of the market. So, without further ado, let's talk about which clubs we're going to be testing today. So the first club we're going to throw in the mix is the Titleist T400. Titleist T400 is a pretty large club head. Uh, it's a very, very forgiving model, but the loft is very, very strong on it. The loft's got 26 degrees on it. For a 7 iron, that's definitely at the strongest end that I've ever seen for a 7 iron. So. It's going to be for those golfers that do have a hard time delivering that club at impact. We talk about dynamic loft. They may hang back on a little bit, may generate a lot of spin with their, their clubs. They just want the ball to hit the ball a little bit further. This is definitely the club for them. We're also going to be testing the uh, Mizuno Hot Metal JPX 921. So the Hot Metal, that you also have the Hot Metal Pro, which is a smaller version. You've got 29 degrees of loft on both those options. So this is the larger version. So kind of the max game improvement iron from Mizuno. Mm -hmm. It really does well in fittings, and uh, we've noticed the last couple of years it's just been great in the store and very forgiving model, 29 degrees loft on that. And then of the other iron, iron looking club here is going to be the TaylorMade Sim 2 Max OS. It's got 28 and a half degrees of loft on it, so it's kind of in that same category with these other three. Uh, large club head, mm -hmm. Taylor Mato is doing a great job with regards to large forgiving club heads that pack some power and distance out of them. Okay, so those are the three irons we're going to be focusing on. Now, we also have some like hybrid looking, almost like ironwood options here we're going to throw in the mix here too. So, first off we're going to talk about is the Tor Edge Hot Launch Ironwood E521. So that club there has actually 32 degrees of loft on it. So it's got a little bit more loft on it. So loft is your friend. It might help get the ball up in the air a little bit easier. A little bit lighter club head. If we look down at it, it looks a little bit more hybrid-like looking. So as we're testing the irons versus the hybrids, I'm going to be intrigued to see what happens to the launch and the spin out of those clubs. Also in this category, we're going to be discussing the, uh, we've got the Cleveland Launcher XL Halo. So this is a newer model. Um, this here has about, I think it's like 30 degrees of loft on it. Um, newer version from, from Cleveland, also in that iron looking category there mm -hmm. too. And then we also have the Cobra T-Rail. Cobra T-Rail, that's going to be in that same kind of category. Uh, we're talking about 29 degrees of loft on it. Still that hybrid looking club, a little, little larger top line, big sole on it. MOI is pushed back to help get the ball up in the air. So kind of an interesting comparison. We've got three traditional looking irons, three more hybrid looking irons, forgiving. So tell me about your golf game recently. I know you haven't done too much practice. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for trying to find something a little bit more forgiving or do you just want to kind of test and see how they kind of work out? I just want to kind of test and see how they're going to work out. Um, I'm the ironwood style. It's never really crossed my mind. Um, I play more. I've played the 919, the JPX a couple years ago, so that's more the style that I'm used to, but it's going to be interesting to see how they compare. Right, and I mean, looking down at it, it's, it's quite a change up. It definitely, it looks like more of a hybrid. I'm always intrigued to see what happens to the spin rate, um, seeing what happens to the launch angle, the height, when we're comparing clubs. Because let's face it, if you have a club that you know, doesn't have much loft on it to start with, and you don't generate enough speed, it may not get up in the air. And mm -hmm. I'm focused on that carry to distance relationship. So we want stopping power. Yeah. So my concern with, for example, say the Titleist T400, it's got 26 degrees of loft on it, is does it still give enough stopping power or is it too strong a lofted where it's going to come in a little bit too flat? Okay. So we're going to test all six models. So it's really kind of like an ultimate comparison comparing these max game improvement irons. 
You ready to hit some shots? Yeah, I'm excited. All right. All right, Skylar, first we're going to start with the Mizuno Hot Metal JPX 921. You mentioned you have played something similar to this, right? Mm -hmm. That exact club, just the 919 Hot Metal, not the 21. All right, so we'll get you started with something a little bit more familiar first. Let's see some shots. Yeah, right off the bat, there's some, some ball speed. Ooh, that felt really good. Wow, was that smoked. I've never hit a seven iron. Yeah, you're, you're setting the bar high here <laughs> like with this that. club. Eh, it's a little right. Oh, these are some great ball speed numbers, though. Wow, that was smoked. Look at that ball speed. Yikes. Right. Got a little Not bit of bad. ground on that one. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's get started. Let's talk about the numbers with the uh, Mizuno Hot Metal. Okay, so your club speed being right around about 74 miles an hour with that club speed. I know we were working on that recently to try and get you a little bit more speed, so it's great to see that. Ball speed, pretty impressive, 100 miles an hour on average. You had two there that were pretty high up there. We're talking 109, 104. This last shot here is maybe a little bit more of a miss hit, but very, very good numbers overall. Mm -hmm. Tell me how the Mizuno Hot Metal felt. Honestly, it felt amazing. Um, I, already, I don't know why I traded from what I used to have. <laughs> I think, honestly, it was because I didn't have the proper shaft last time, but that felt so good. I mean, a, I know it wasn't super consistent, but that's something I'm working on. But just the feel of it when I hit it flush, or even those couple that my ball speed was over 100 miles an hour, it felt like butter. Right, I that's mean, awesome. you talk about consistency. I mean, you fit into that more game improvement category, and that's why a mm -hmm. lot of viewers will be watching this and they'll kind of realize that, yeah, I'm, I've got a similar swing here to Skylar, and I need forgiveness. Well, you we all need forgiveness. This game's hard enough as it is. You just have a little bit more club face control that you need to, to, need to work on, and by having a little larger club head, it's gonna help ball go a little bit straighter on those miss hits there too, because mm -hmm. if I put a blade in your hand, there's no way that these shots would have ended up like they did there as well. So it's a great start there from Mizuno. You said it felt amazing. Uh, I was really impressed with that, with that ball speed on that fourth shot. I can't believe how high that was. So that was, that was impressive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's switch this up a little bit. So let's now change this over. I know you haven't done too much with, mm -hmm. uh, with these more iron hybrid looking clubs. So let's first start off with the Torage Iron Wood. Uh, it's going to have a little bit more loft on it, and it's going to have a little bit more of a visual look, more like a hybrid. Nice and straight. Yeah, not bad. Nice swing. There we go. That was hit really well. Okay, that was a good one there to finish with the, the Tor Edge uh, E521 Ironwood. Uh, tell me about that club, how it looks, how it felt. Did you notice any difference compared to, say, the Mizuno? Yes. Um, I wouldn't say it's like night and day, but it's pretty close. Um, you know, going from something that I'm more used to looking at to something that's quite a bit bigger, it was a little. Hard to get to adjust to it, hard to adjust at first looking at it. But even like some of my shots that were pretty decent, like right here, it still didn't feel as good as almost a miss hit would with the Mizuno. Um, it does offer a lot of forgiveness. I can definitely feel that. I know like even with my miss hits, I think with the Mizuno, they would be a little bit more spread out. But there's just not a lot of feedback with it. Right. And I, it didn't go as far. Um, so if you take a look here, your carry distance, yeah, it's maybe going a little bit straighter. Mm -hmm. Didn't go as far because it is three degrees weaker in loft. Now, a lot of people have asked for us to try and do these comparisons with the same loft on each club. Now, let's face it, these cast irons, we, we can't really bend them more than a degree or, or two. Mm -hmm. So even though, even though I wanted to, I couldn't, I couldn't really manipulate it and try and bend one well, as a fitting component. I don't want to do that either. But these clubs are designed with a certain amount of loft on them for a particular reason. They usually carry distance, a little bit shorter overall, 
Total distance just a little bit shorter overall there too. But you did have three very, very nice and straight shots with that too. Mm -hmm. So loft also is always going to be a, a, your friend to hit the ball a little bit straighter overall. Um, if we look here at the averages, let's see if we stand, anything stands out to us. Similar club speed, but when you don't have as, when you have more loft on the club, your ball speed is going to be a little bit less. And it's just going to go a little bit shorter overall. And you can see even the best shot that you hit with that with that torage was that was that last swing. Um, I believe it was 139.9 going 151. We take a look at the averages here of the Mizuno. It was 139 going 159. So the Mizuno did spin a little bit less. It did release out a little bit more. But even still, your average with the Mizuno was a little bit better than uh, your best shot when with the torage. So that's what I kind of noticed. So interesting results. You got a little bit of height on, the, on that particular shot, 42.8. Let's see here with the Mizuno, if there's anything that stands out here on that height there or that landing angle. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit lower. So take a look here at that landing angle. One here at 45.1, that was when you left the face open. Then you can take a look at these other ones. It's a little bit lower. So that's the difference in that stopping power that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice how it just took a little bit longer for that ball to stop when you had a little bit less loft on it. But interesting results with those clubs. Uh, let's go back to a little stronger lofted club here again. So let's go to the Titleist T400. That was hit well. It's a little left. Well, ball but speed not over 100. Oh, that felt really good. Yep, good ball speed numbers there. Nice. Wow. Have you ever hit a 7-iron 175 yards? Never in my life. <laughs> well, okay, so I mean, yeah, the loft's stronger. We know that. It does have a 7 ridden on it, so technically it's a 7-iron, but really what's more important is the distance you hit the club. Mm -hmm. As I don't care what, what number's ridden on your golf club. What matters is you know your distances and know your mm -hmm. yardages. That was smoked. That was yeah, a that really good swing. Yeah, that felt really good. Yeah. That, felt that good might too. be even better. Oh, there you go. 167. Pretty good. Oh boy. That's three in a row, four in a row with that bull speed over 100. That's yeah, a little right. That's okay. Yeah. You know, that one just left the face a little bit open. It almost is 8.5 degrees open there. Um, let's take a look at the numbers with this. Take the Titleist T400. See if there's anything that stands out to us. So highest ball speed overall. Um, that, is, that makes sense because the loft is the strongest loft out of, out of the mold there as well. 142 going 163. Pretty good numbers. And as we mentioned, we had that one that carried 155 going 175. The only issue I have with this club is exactly that difference between your carry and total distance. Mm -hmm. Notice a little bit less spin. So it depends on the golf course you're playing, but you'll notice this landing angle, how it was a little bit lower there. So you had a little harder time stopping the ball on the green with this particular club. It's gonna go far, but the, the challenge is going to be exactly that, is stopping power. So it took 21 yards for it to stop on, on the green. Um, so that's where sometimes a stronger loft of 7-iron may be a harder, op a, not the best option for some people. Yeah. But if you all you care about is getting that total distance out there and you're used to chasing the, the ball up on the green anyway and not too worried about the height, it's, it's going to go. It's because it's, it's a 26-degree club. I mean, it's got 6 degrees more loft on it than the previous club that you hit. Mm -hmm. We'll notice that you went from 129 going 148 to 142 going 163. So you picked up some serious distance with the T400. Yeah. How does that look? How did it feel? Yeah, so I mean, initially just looking at it, it's not as thick of a top line as I thought it would be because like looking at the bottom of it, it's, it's pretty wide, truthfully. Um, not that I was concerned to hit it, but I thought it would be chunky. Um, but looking at the top line, it's still a little bigger than what I'm used to seeing, but it's not as, it's smaller than I thought. Um, feel wise, I still think I liked the feel of the Mizuno. Um, but this still felt really good coming through on the couple of those flush shots. It just felt solid. Um, so I'm not going to lie, the T400, it sounded pretty loud when you hit yeah. it well. It definitely had, it had some juice behind it. It definitely was, was pretty loud overall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's now flip flop back over to the hybrid looking club. Now we've got the Launcher XL Halo Iron. 
That was hit really that well. Really wow, good. was that good. I like that. I like that spin on that shot. Stopping power. A little miss hit. Both mm -hmm. speed's still over 100, though. That felt really good. Wow. The launch angle of this club is just so much higher. That's a little thin, but not bad. A pretty good miss, though. Just a little left on that mm -hmm. one. Even still, I mean, landing angle was a little higher, spin was a little higher. Okay, so numbers with the Cleveland. This is, you know, quite surprising here just to see. Look at that both speed number, really, really good. And the loft on this is 30 degrees, so it's actually four degrees weaker than the T400. Let's move over here to the right. I want to talk about this number. Landing angle, really good, 40.5 degrees. It's going to be, give you the best stopping power that you possibly can, can get overall. And you'll notice the height, it was the highest there at 69 feet in the air. So how did that club feel? Because I thought the numbers were good. Honestly, I'm surprised. Um, I've never, like I said, I've never hit this type of club except for, you know, honestly, just right now. Um, and sometimes it's hard to get over the fact that it's such a bigger club and I don't want that forgiveness because I like to think that I'm better than I am. But honestly, having it, it's nice. Um, it felt a lot better, truthfully, than the Tour Edge. Um, it has a really nice feel to it. And when I hit the flush shots, it didn't feel as chunky as maybe the T400 or the Tour Edge did. Um, but it felt good. Yeah, as I find this interesting. If we take a look at the two hybrid options here, look at that launch angle. It's the exact same. Oh. No, you didn't hit the Tour Edge as well. I, I agree. You just Something was just a little bit off on, on that one, though. A couple of missits in there. Um, but the Cleveland XL Halo for you was definitely a good fit because we got a little bit more spin. Definitely got a high carry distance. So if we were going to rank right now, your carry distance. Highest carry distance, not as far as the T400, but remember that carry to total distance relationship, only 15 yards when the T400 was, you know, talking 21 yards. Mm -hmm. So kind of a big difference there. I like that Cleveland XL Halo. It's, uh, it's designed to launch in the air, which it did. Uh, it's designed to spin a little bit more and give you that stopping power, which I uh, pleasantly surprised with that particular club. So. I am too. So let's move back to a little bit more traditional iron. We've got the TaylorMade Sim 2 Max OS. Oh, that felt good. There you go. Nice swing. Oh, God. Nice swing. Okay, TaylorMade Sim 2 uh, Max OS. How did that one fit in with uh, the others? I wasn't the biggest fan of it, truthfully. Um, looking down at the top line, I think it's a little bit bigger than even the T400. I mean, of course, I don't have them side by side, but just looking at it, it just looks a little bit bigger. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if it's just in my head because I've hit the Sim, not the Sim OS, but I've hit the Sim Max before and it just wasn't one of my favorites. Um, I mean, it's a pretty small. It's a small dispersion circle, yeah. Dispersion, but just feel wise, I just don't know if I get a lot of feedback as much okay. as I did with the Cleveland or the Mizuno. Yeah, I mean, I, I did like the fact that the landing angle was up there. Now, it wasn't as high as, say, the Cleveland XL Halo there. But it was, you know, up there for guys to carry distance. So you did have some stopping power. However, I'm, I'm going to say this right, right now. A lot of that is to do with your face angle being open. Mm -hmm. When you're hitting this club, if we take a look at your, your face angle, we were going to rank this from highest to lowest. It was actually open 4.8 degrees. And that does resemble you having a hard time with just hitting the ball straight or hitting it just didn't give you that feedback that you wanted. When your face angle was going to be more open than the others, it's naturally it's going to launch higher. Mm -hmm. Naturally it's going to fly higher and spin more. So it was more the fact that you're leaving that face angle open, which is why the bull fly a little, a little bit higher. 
even still with your face angle being pretty high open overall, it still wasn't the highest flying club. It was still this Cleveland XL Halo mm -hmm. overall. And you add that blue circle with the Cleveland in there. I did like how much straighter that you were hitting that. But yeah, you just leave the face angle a little bit open. You got three over here that were pretty, pretty far over there to the right side. Okay, finally, let's finish up here with the Cobra T-Rail. Slight little miss hit. That's still about my normal distance with my 7 iron. Right, it was still a good miss. Mm -hmm. Oh, that felt really good. Yeah, that was really nice swing there. Really good swing there to finish with. Well, Skyler, thanks so much for hitting all those shots with these clubs. Excellent, uh, ex excellent results overall. First, let's talk about numbers. Uh, we'll notice here your club speed numbers, you know, kind of ranging here between 73 and 74 miles an hour, so pretty consistent there overall. Uh, we look at ball speed. So we look at ball speed, we're ranked from the highest. The Cleveland XL Halo, Titus T400, they were kind of up there with regards to ball speed. T-Rail a little bit shorter, same as the Sim 2 Max OS, Mizuno Hot Metal, and you just didn't hit the, the Tor Edge E521 as well here today, and that's mm -hmm. why I was a little bit lacking there on, on the ball speed. But overall, pretty, pretty good numbers. Um, you hit the T-Rail here pretty good here at the end as well. One thing I did like with it is, once again, is that stopping power. So we like that this landing angle. It actually was the highest landing angle of the day. Almost ranked, now the, the TaylorMade Sim 2 Max OS just snuck ahead of the, the hot launch, but almost ranked from the, the hybrid looking clubs being the highest landing angle and then the non-hybrid clubs being the, sh the smaller landing angle overall, but it, you know, it was close. Let me ask you, how did the T-Rail feel? Um, it felt good. I liked, you know, it does have a louder sound to it, but it's nothing that sounds bulky or chunky with it. It has a really, like, crisp feeling coming off the face. Um, you know, looking down at it, of course, it is a little bit wider, but I do like the black finish on the club. Um, you know, just cosmetically, I like the look of it. Um, I do still think I like the feel of the Cleveland more, but this is my second favorite of the Ironwood style. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, they were pretty similar numbers. You can see a little higher launch with them, a um, little higher spin. So you can see T-Rail and Cleveland XL Halo, the spin rate with those were a little bit higher. Spin is your friend. Spin gets the ball to get up in the air and give you that landing angle and give you that stopping power that, that you want. You notice the height, 72 feet, 69 feet in the air with those. And your club face wasn't as far open with those. The only reason the Sim 2 Max OS was up there is because that face angle there was open. That's why the ball flew a little bit higher. And we're going to see it here. We we'll take a look at your dispersion pattern. Uh, you can see that the blue and the green were kind of in that same area if you guys are carry distance. A little bit shorter there for the T rail total distance overall, but you can see that overall carry distance was up there a little bit more. And we can see that in the numbers here too. So if we're going to rank carry distance overall, look at the Cleveland X Halo, 146.2, going 161. So fifth stopping power of 15 yards. T-Rail 142, going 156, stopping power of 14 yards. 15 yards for the Sim 2 Max OS. Now that's only because the face angle was open when you were hitting it. But if you look at the others, we look at these other irons um, that don't have that hybrid appeal to them as much. We'll take a look at the stopping power. 142 going 163. Yeah, that's 21 yards of stopping power. 138 going 159. That's 21 stop yards of stopping power. So the reason I like those, those hybrid looking irons is one, they're forgiving, but they do cause stopping power. They help a lot with spin. Bull flies a little bit higher. And if you are having a hard time with striking inconsistency, it's definitely an option to consider. Mm -hmm. I know visually, yeah, it doesn't really look like an iron looking down at it. It's not as traditional as more of a, what you would normally expect to see. But if you can get over the looks and you see the results are performing really well, they're definitely a good option to throw in the mix. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask you here, Skylar, too. Would you consider play them, or do you feel like you still would want to stick with a more traditional 7-iron look? Honestly, I, I, I know the Mizuno didn't perform as well, but I think feel-wise and feedback, it definitely had the best. Um, I think I would probably need to 
hit a couple more shots with my top too, you know, from the more standard iron to the ironwood. Um, you know, playing in college and playing, but you know, having a surgery, not practicing as much, I think I would, I think getting something like this would be more beneficial to my game, but there is that, well, I want to hit an iron, but you know, this is better ultimately for my type of swing that I have right now. Right. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're sneaky good for, for golfers that you know, their club speed, you know, isn't, isn't super fast. You know, your club speed here is about 74 miles an hour with a, with a seven iron. You know, if that club speed starts dropping any lower than that, um, you, you, the CG on the club, the way it's designed, the way it's designed to get through the turf, get the ball up in the air, being more of a hybrid style, style, style iron, it's just going to make life a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's enough to say, yeah, I'll, I'll play that, or maybe it's just like, you know, I'll work on my game. I still want to play a more traditional looking iron. I'm all for it, but definitely a little more forgiving iron. And when you're, you're playing, you, know, you talked about the hot metal, you played the 9, 919 version, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, it's not like I'm telling you, you know, consider playing a blade or anything like that, but a little more forgiving club is designed to get the ball up in the air and be easier to hit overall. Mm -hmm. So today's results were very interesting. We noticed that uh, the hybrid looking irons were performing pretty well in the fitting bay. If you can get over the visual look and the feel and the sound a little bit, there's no doubt it's definitely a good option for golfers that want extra height, want extra spin, that maybe just can't generate that club speed to get the ball up in the air. So golfers, if you're interested in uh, any of these hybrid looking clubs or any of these other game improvement irons that we tested today, Come on into Second Swing. We'd love to get you fit, get you, get you checked out and see how they perform. Also, if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to our channel. Let us know what kind of videos that you would like to see in the future.